Hello and welcome to MB Tech. My name is Matt Bingham and today I'll be talking about Linux containers, uh, specifically the LXC uh, commands that you can use within different uh, Linux versions. You can use CentOS, you can use Ubuntu, you can use Debian. I mean, you can use pretty much any of uh, the Linux flavors to do the uh, Linux containers. Um, these are a uh, kernel based virtualization. Um, you know, you can do different types of versions of Linux that you can set up on each box in a container and stuff like that. So basically we're just going to do an initial install on a minimal Linux CentOS uh, 7.6 and then we'll, we'll go through the steps that need to be done to uh, create that and, and get that going. So first off we're going to need to SSH into the box. bigger so you can see it. Uh, it. And first thing we're going to do is just verify that we got everything upgraded. Everything looks good there. Now we're going to do a yum install Apple release. Basically the Apple is the um, enterprise uh, extended location and repository where there's extras it's actually extras of uh, repository for different types of uh, things and actually LX LXC is part of the uh, Apple uh, repository so we're going to install that with a yum install Apple release say yes to that so we've got the Apple release installed. Uh, next, the th biggest thing you need to make sure is that Perl's installed along with libvert. So we'll install those as well. Say yes to that. Okay, that is completed. So I'm just going to clear the screen so I have a little bit more uh, space here. You can see it. I'm make sure this is get everything a little bit larger. Um, next thing we're going to do is actually install. It's called DEB Bootstrap, uh, Deb Bootstrap. Basically, what it does is it allows you to install Debian on a CentOS system, uh, which I think is pretty cool. So uh, we'll do that next. Okay, so now that's been installed. Uh, next thing, now we're actually ready to install uh, the Linux containers, the LXC. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to actually install just the LXC, the LXC templates, and then I'm not going to install the LXC extra, just to show you that there is a difference that the extras do bring into play, which I think are very important. So we want to make sure that we, we get the extras, but I'm going to actually install it without it at first, and then we'll install it so you can see the difference. Okay, LXC is pretty much installed. Um, what we need to do now is I'm just going to show you like if we do an LXC, tab twice, and you can see the commands. There's actually, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, 20, 21. There's 21 here. But the one that, that's missing that I think is most important is the actual list or LS command. Um, the LS command can give you more information about uh, the containers that you actually have running on the system. So now we'll actually do an install and extra. OK, 
Okay, I just wanted to make sure that you see that there's more commands now. Now we have the lxcls command, so we can actually run that. And we can see that there's no containers running on the system, the state of it, the IP address, and auto start and stuff like that. That's all I really want to show you about that command for now. Um, the next thing that we really need to make sure is that we have the uh, LXC services running and the libvirtd services running. So we'll actually start those with the system control command. Okay, once that's been uh, run, then the next thing we do is make sure that the uh, libvirt D is running. That looks like it started. And next we're just going to check the status of the uh, LXC service. And we can see that it is active and that it is running. So that's pretty much installing the uh, product and getting it on the system from this point on it's actually creating the actual containers and then uh, determining uh, what kind you want to install and, and other things like that so the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to create a container and it's going to be the type of Ubuntu and then we can uh, next one we'll do an actual CentOS uh, box after that so let's uh, do that it's just the LXC create name we're just call it uh we'll call it ubuntu web t is for the template and it's going to be U U B U N ubuntu for the template uh this one is going to take longer than the other ones i'll, I'll demonstrate that as well but the first one always takes a long time because it has to actually download all of the uh, files so we'll hit enter on there and it's retrieving the um ubuntu uh down minimal down to the system. Okay, it is finally finished installing, and at the very end, it actually tells you the default user is Ubuntu with the password of Ubuntu. Um, and then to use a pseudo command to run task as root in the container. So you, right now that actually container is there. Um, we can do that. Look to see that real quick with the LXC. LS and dash F for fancy. And you can see that there's the name of it, the state of it, and no IP address yet and no auto start. So what we can do now is now that the system is, is there, we can create another one real quick. And this time it's a lot faster because all it's doing is really just creating or copying that same directory that all that went into. So it took about five, six minutes to download the other one. I sped through the uh, video to make it faster. So this time we're gonna create another one. And you can see it's just copying the, the var uh, cache. Boom, it's done. So there's now two. So if we go and do the uh, fancy again, we see that we've got two of those. Um, now. This time I'm actually going to do a, uh, a CentOS. So we'll do a CentOS web. And this time type will be CentOS. And again, this will take quite a bit of time to do the initial one, but then the second one will be very fast. Okay, there we go. Uh, this one here actually is a little bit different. This actually tells you where the temporary password is located to log into that box um, for that. So if you lose it, it says it'll expire. You can also do a change root real quick and do a root FS password on that. Um, so next thing is we're gonna do the list again. And you can see now that we've got 
a CentOS web and two Ubuntu's. We're going to create another CentOS web, which won't take long this time because it's already been downloaded this time. Okay, that one's done as well. So now we've got four web servers, two CentOS, two Ubuntu. And now what we need to do is we need to actually start it. So we'd actually use the LLC start command. It'd be the name, so we'll do CentOS web. And then at the end of that, we're actually going to do D, which basically demonizes or demonizes it. Um, that makes it so it runs in the background. So we've got that started. And we might as well start the other ones. And then again, we can do our fancy little list again. And we can see that we've got two of the servers, or all four running, and the other ones are still waiting on their IP addresses. If we run it again, uh, we probably, yeah, we'll have all the IP addresses. So they're the IP addresses of the actual boxes themselves. Um, so instance, we know Ubuntu web is uh, Ubuntu and Ubuntu for the password. So we can go SSH, Ubuntu, to IP address 192.168.1.1. .215. We gotta say yes to get the key and then Ubuntu again. Okay, we're now in the Ubuntu server. Um, if we do an IPA, whoops. We can see the IP address is the same one that we went to. We're in the Ubuntu web. We can exit that. And we're back to the main host. If you wanted to, we can go into the second Ubuntu one, which is 143. And we're in that one. As you can say, see, it's Ubuntu Web 1. So that's containerization uh, with LXC. Linux containers, real short, simple, easy to do, easy to set up, easy to run. Uh, the next thing we're actually going to do is... Uh, probably I'm going to set up an Ansible server within that and actually use the containers as well for uh, getting the Ansible up and running and being able to um, communicate to those other systems to push configuration files and stuff like that.